Hi everybody, welcome to another video with me, Dr. Sarah. Thank you for joining me today on Break Free Medicine. And today I'm going to talk about lavender essential oil. It's part of my next series of videos that are specifically focusing on essential oils that have been confirmed in human trials, as well as studies that outline their biochemical actions in vitro and in vivo basically in petri dishes and in rodents. So I start with lavender because it seems most appropriate because it is the universal essential oil and it's one of the most well known for its calming scents. Now if you're interested in learning more about some of the mechanisms of actions of essential oils in general, I did review that in previous videos as well as talked about some of the caveats and potentials of assessing essential oils actions based on certain types of experiments. So I will have a link to that in the accompanying article to this video so that you can check that out if you want to. But let's go ahead and start with lavender oil. Now, studies from petri dishes and rodents have evaluated lavender's mechanisms of actions, and there's a lot because there's a lot of different constituents in lavender essential oil. Now, I stated in a previous post and in a previous video that an article review mentioned that lavender had an effect on serotonin receptors. We think of serotonin as a calming neurotransmitter which affects our brain and results in body responses. But other studies have found that this essential oil has an impact on many other neurotransmitters, including NMDA, dopamine, GABA, histamine, and acetylcholine. Now, these neurotransmitters are important for focus, um, calming, inhibition calming, as well as balancing excitatory calming of the brain and memory. There was a mega lavender review article that I did post on the website and it talks about the implications of lavender's multiple actions for various neurological disorders based on these mechanisms that were found and specifically they said this could be applied for pain relieving, anxiety, depression, uh, seizures, and they discuss that in detail. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and read about lavender's different constituents and how they specifically hit different targets at the cellular level in mice and in petri dishes. Now in human trials, lavender's oil's positive effects on mood and relaxation response have been assessed through specific brain imaging techniques, either a functional MRI or an EEG, which measures the brainwave elect, um, activity. And it was found that lavender is overall calming and its effect is so well respected that overseas it's used as a drug for anxiety in Europe. It's actually marketed as Selexin. So I've provided a summary of lavender's oil and its influences on the nervous system in more detail from a previous post and again you can get that link in the accompanying article to this video. But you can also explore in more detail some of these, how these mechanisms also affect other systems of the body, including hormones, which is a favorite topic of mine, as well as how these calming actions and these abilities to modulate the cellular receptors and um, our brain tone and nervous system also impact the cardiovascular system and many other systems in a positive way. Um, what's cool is that the link of this um, examine article that I provided also um, goes into the dosage of lavender that is used in Europe at, by mouth, right? So I know that's a controversy, but when it is used appropriately under the proper guidance, they've been using it as a drug in Europe, as I said. So make sure that you are checking that out if you're interested more in the science. If not, I gave you a basic rundown summary. And some of my favorite ways to use lavender oil 
my lavender oil, is I diffuse about eight drops in my automizer diffuser. Now, automizers are the best diffusers to get because you want to um, get the most therapeutic value and dispersion with um, essential oils by the way that the, uh, the ionic plate is set up. So that's your best bet. There's also some that you can buy online that are the they diffuse the oils, you still get the benefit, but if you want the most therapeutic respiratory benefit, you want to go with an atomizer. Other ways that I use lavender is I place a dilution of a few drops of lavender, so I use about a teaspoon of carrier oil, put a few drops in that, and I apply it on my feet at night or in the back of my neck to help me sleep. And I also use it on my face on occasion, or I just take the bottle and I just inhale and it's very calming. And I also have my clients do this as well. So in the next few videos, I'll talk about some other essential oils, keeping it short and sweet. And I also wanted to give you a bonus tip for the oil scent of the summer because it's summer in the Northeast and it's actually warm and the sun is out. And I sent out a short and sweet summary of this to all my essential oil subscribers. So if you want to learn more about essential oils, get weekly e-tips as well as my blogs and never miss a blog, make sure that you subscribe on my website. Um, but uh, let me talk to you a little bit about citronella essential oil, the smell of summer, right? This oil is from the lemongrass family, which is one of my favorite oils, lemongrass oil for um, my kitty cat, Kiera, if you ever caught that post that I did a while back over the holidays a few years ago. But citronella is pretty well known as the scent of the summer that is useful in keeping pesky blood-sucking critters away. Yes, I'm talking about those little buggy creatures that lure over our picnics and make it very annoying for us to just enjoy the summer annoyance-free. So citronella can help with that. But I was delighted to learn that it also appears to have expanded uses throughout the whole year. And it seems to be good for deterring other unwanted bugs in the human vicinity, as well as coming in handy for Fido. Now, one particular study with citronella that got my attention that made me excited to share was a placebo randomized trial with children subjects to test if it would decrease their risk for lice infestation. Now, that is hard core application for something, right? Lice is definitely itchy head craziness that would damper any time fun. So the tested potency that they used of citronella was 3.7% diluted microencapsulated oil. So I did a little math. It boiled down to about 0.5 to 1 drop a day. If you're interested in the math, the dose is about 18 drops per ounce in carrier oil, but the authors didn't say the exact methods of dilution, so give or take a few. The children received 0.39 to 0.9 milliliters daily for 200 milliliters uh, um, in a 200 milliliter bottle, which is about a six ounce bottle, and it was applied to their hair six days a week. So I, you know, if your eyes glazed over again, that's about 0.5 to one drop a day rubbed in their little hairs. And the results showed that only 12% in the citronella group got the lice infestation out of one, so there were 100 kids, only 12% got it in the lice, in the citronella experiment, and only 50.5% um, of the kids in the placebo arm got lice. So there was a, it was a, it was a towing cost in the placebo, whereas for the, the kids, there were 98 kids in the placebo, there were 100 kids in the citronella group, and only 12 of the kids got the lice infestation when they used a citronella at one drop a day for six days a week. So that was pretty cool. And they also had less risk, if the ones that were infested who used the citronella had less risk of getting reinfested with the lice. So definitely something that you can be used in the summer months and then in the beginning of the school year for our little ones. More good news is an in vitro study. Now we know the caveats of in vitro, but usually if we're talking about 
uh, actions based on deterring bugs away from an outside application, it can be helpful, right? Because we're not actually dealing with the biochemistry and individuality of the individual when we're trying to deter things. We're just trying to see what the bug's going to respond to and get the heck away from us. Um, and this was for kissing bugs, the unwanted kissing bugs. Um, and it also seemed to be a phytosilencer. It decreased barks when it was used on a collar versus a tested placebo. So I guess a little less irritated pooch makes for quieter summer nights. Here's a practical tip um, for a bug rub away with Centronella. If you want to try it, I would start with diluting about six drops in an ounce of carrier oil. That would be about a 1% dilution. If you're a big, heavy-handed oil lover and you know you respond well, go ahead and do 18 drops um, if you'd like a 3% solution. And you may need to reapply it about every hour when you're outside, depending on the mosquito hunger quotient. I based this dose on the efficacy of the one drop a day from the study on the children I just talked to you about, and also the timing of a very small study of 15 brave participants that volunteered their forearms to test various mosquito repellents effectiveness. And it found that the citronella-based oil bracelet reported to be helpful at keeping bugs away for about 20 minutes. However, this was not a high-quality, undiluted essential oil. So I'm thinking that the, you know, the concentrate would be a little bit more potent. That being said, my disclaimer here, please read my safety tips and be aware of your body's response, and it's always best to use your own judgment and that of your healthcare professional's opinion. So I hope you enjoyed that oil tidbit. Um, so you can go ahead and start using your citronella oil, and then you can also be coming from those more robust and uh, unwinding times of the summer with lavender essential oil. And I will be back with another video. Um, I always say this, but I still end up doing a video every week, but I might with the summer and things, working on new projects and presentations, actually, I might be coming in a little less frequency, but I will not leave you. And if I keep getting a lot of feedback, I'll be back. Um, so make sure you provide it if you want to see more. Great to have you here, and thank you for watching, thank you for reading, and have a wonderful, wonderful day or night. Bye.